So my son Gabriel, who I'm very, very close with, obviously, you folks know that. Well, my, my, my daughter Ava, too, but she's in Wales right now in college, and my beautiful wife, Daniel. My son Gabriel has already figured out at the age of 13 years old, in the eighth grade, he's already figured out what he wants to do for a living. And he talked about this on the air with me when he was here back in July, one of Bernie's last shows, by the way. And he said, I am doing cybersecurity. I got to tell you, a guy actually reached out to me who works in some cybersecurity place in Queens or somewhere. And he said, I'll give Gabe a job. Now, he can't do it because Gabe is only 13 years old. But there was this whole big deal about cybersecurity firms and Gabriel, my son. That's all he wants to do. And then I find out like two weeks ago, they come to me in sales and they go, hey, listen, we want you to do a spot for a cybersecurity firm. How do you feel about that? I go, do you listen to the show? I actually talk about that, and I don't know anything about it, okay? My son is, he, he sits in front of a server, and he could figure out anything, Gabriel. I know nothing about it, but how ironic is it that my only son, my angel, is dying to do this for a living. Now I'm doing spots for a big-time cybersecurity company, and sitting to my left is the man that founded that company. He's got 25 years' experience in this field, the founder and CEO of Protected Harbor, Richard Luna. Is that a cool story? It, <clears throat> that's awesome. Yeah. And, and the best thing is to have your passion, even in 13, which is what I did. I started out as a programmer way back in the day, and this is where I, I led. And it's awesome to be and do exactly what you love. Yeah, he's, he's dying to do it. All about cybersecurity. My daughter, Law, she's in, going to law in, uh, in Europe. He wants to do this. And, and I guess, you know, he's nervous, my son. Because we talk all the time about China and we talk about Russia. That's what we do on this show. And there's not going to be a war militarily between the U.S. and China. But you know this better than anybody. They've hacked our this. They've hacked our that. The Russians have done the same. So forgetting about businesses first in New York City, which we'll get to, the reality of an international war through cyber attacks is something that is very, very real. Yes? Oh, 100%. You have to lock down devices because they, uh, we are constantly being bombarded on an on a minute by minute basis from Russia, from overseas, all the time. We use a technology called geoblocking, so that if your source material, if you're if you're a hacker overseas, you can't come in and attack because of where you're physically located. Well, how does that make sense? And how could they possibly hack airlines, newspapers? I mean, we saw uh, one day a couple of years ago they were shutting the lights in certain cities. How is it that these other people aren't equipped with that type of protective uh, hardware? Because we've, we're growing, we're growing the interconnected network. Okay. And so now you got more devices connected, and people don't look, step back, and say, "What's the value? Where are the holes?" And so uh, you put out a new device, and boom, you've now created an access place where people can come in and attack. And you've, at once in a while, you've got to stop and say, where's the scope and depth? You can't have data exchange where you're s- able to send and receive data yeah. and not create a problem. Then that's the issue. We're still living with a model from the 70s and 80s right. where, hey, everybody's a good guy. And if I share mm. the wrong data, oh, it'll be okay. They'll delete uh, it. That, that's not the case. No. So, so even though we're making improvements, you know, the, the, the China can shut our lights any day of the week. They can, they can steal my money out of my bank account. They can, any one of these places. I don't want to cause panic. No, you got to be honest. Where I'm honest yeah. is that security, we are not paying attention to security the way we need to. We are not paying attention to the proliferation of data. Every time you see a hack, boom, that's, uh, you see 10,000 records get sent out, or now you're on a, on a public list. There's 10,000 entry points now that somebody can come back and spoof your ID. Wow. Now, is this, when you say we're not paying attention, and I don't want to talk politics here, but I have to bring it up. Is that exclusive, Richard, to this administration? Was Trump's administration guilty of the same thing? Is there a difference between the way Republicans and Democrats treat this possibility, or is it basically an American problem? We tend to... Every time you've got technology, people's eyes glaze over because they think they can't understand it. And that deficiency. That's me. 
that deficiency is is hum, is human and it's universal. Yeah, it's it is scary. Like I, I get scared to death. I like I, I am so bad at all this stuff. I really am. Like my phone, like everybody else's phone. There's this like light that comes on. It's like a spotlight, and I have to have my son shut it off. I can't figure out how to shut it off. And by the way, there's a there's like an icon right there at the bottom of the phone. To, 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 I can't shut it off. I mean, right. and, and and it actually scares me. I get intimidated. Now you, like you said to me, you know, when this mic goes on, what happens? You've been doing this for a long time. I don't get scared. I don't get intimidated. Right. Uh, for you, this is the same thing with this business. You are so good at this. You've been doing this for so long that you don't get intimidated ever, never, never. No, Nothing I, pops I, up where you go, in, in I fa- can't figure this out? No, because, because there are certain laws in how data, data is like water. It looks it's like a garden hose. You've got a leaky garden hose, that's data. Yeah. So as long as you understand that, you look at the music of where data flows, and that's what you look to uh, find and resolve and understand how the business is working and just listen to the complaints of, of the day-to-day workers and then understand, oh, that's how they're using data. Okay, now you know, okay, this is where they could be exposed. Here's where they're not going to be exposed. Richard Luna, 25 years, and he is the CEO and founder of Protected Harbor, which I do promote every day, a great, great, great cybersecurity uh, company. And according to you and other studies that I've seen, to be honest, there's a New York company getting attacked, cyber attacked, every day. Every That's day. how often this happens, right? All the time. All the time. And... If you are attacked, six months, your business is dead. Dead? Dead. You're kidding. No. Nope. Well, give me the reason why. Are they, they, what do because they do? Because CEOs don't understand the importance of their data. They don't understand that people are trying to attack them, not because they have anything against that company, because their data is valuable. So what can CEOs do then, besides, I don't know, calling Protected Harbor, obviously? It, what can they do to, to stop some of this? If I had a bar of gold and I put it on your desk, right. I'd have armed guards here. If I bring you, especially in front of me, <laughs> if I bring you social security numbers of my clients, boom, there's nobody here. Interesting. That so, is true. So think how important that data is and think what, what you need to do to make sure that that data is safe. So it's fair to say that cybersecurity is going to be a continuing problem, that until we really have more people like you, Richard, that are that know what to do and aware of it, it will continue to be a major problem here in this country, yes? Until we understand how to design away ransomware attacks, which is what we do for our clients, yeah. we, don't, we don't put in an app or just hit a button and say, oh, it's wonderful. We look at how they're working and we re-architect that client so that they're bulletproof, not just from ransomware attacks, not just from cy- cyber attacks, but from power outages, from gr- phenomenal growth, all points of failure, that's the model. Is there, if somebody wasn't about to call you yet and they just wanted to fix it themselves, uh, is there a, a software they can download? Is there something they can do without uh, calling Protected Harbor? I mean, eventually they're going to have to call you. I they know that. They can run but... isolated backups, meaning a backup that's not connected and left live. Yeah. That's the single best way that a business owner can protect his business or her business. It's to make sure that their backups, when they're done, are removed. Whether that's a big company and it's a server or a group of servers, Servers, or whether that's a small business and it's physically a removable drive, because if there's an attack, that attack will find those backups and it'll corrupt them. But if they're disconnected, then no, they won't. They'll they'll be uh, safe. I gotta uh, assume, Rich, that the first of all, you're a super guy and and uh, you look nice. You're all dressed in black. You got a nice <laughs> chain. You got a nice tan. So the this um, this misconception of this guy must be a real geek or doesn't sit by computers all day is not really true in Rich's case. But I got to think that your business is one of the more growing businesses in America today. That that and this is a real problem uh, for local businesses, for national security, and people like you at this point become very very handy. I'm I'm grateful, and I love what I do. You do so. I I love seeing and being able to solve problems that nobody else yeah. solves. Did you did you start like I did on the Commodore sixty four and playing Atari uh, uh, XL? Atari eight hundred. <laughs> <laughs> and then you got all excited when, like, the, they had the uh, – there was another company that made uh, new games, like Kaboom 
Activision. Remember when oh, the yeah. Activision cartridges yeah, yeah, came yeah, out? Yeah, 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 yeah. Remember how excited you were? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. yeah no, my, my first was an Atari 800. Me I love that machine. Me, too. Yeah. I love and, and actually, before that, I had that little football game. It was like a little white uh, thing, and, and there were little red dots, uh, little re- and they just I ran re- into each other. Yeah. And Mattel yeah. made it. Mattel and yeah, Tele- yeah, I remember. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. Mattel made Mattel and Television. Then you had ColecoVision. Okay, so I was a little bit m- nerdier. I had TI-59, oh a little God. programmable cal- cal- calculator. A little nerdier? <laughs> yeah. And, and I'll tell you how I got my bug of technology. I wrote a game called Lunar Lander, and I sent it to TI, and way back, and they published it. And after wow. that, after that, yeah, you, if you crashed on the moon, you, it would blink. And I, I figured out what, uh, how to, you'd, you'd type in 25, and it would be 25 pounds of thrust, and it would adjust. And then when, if you hit at more than 100 miles per hour, it would blink the display. That's great. I sent that, and they published it. You were, that was it. That was hope. it. Yeah. I was Luna uh, Lander. Your last name is Luna, not <laughs> Luna, but Luna Lander. My brother-in-law, Albert, is driving to Florida right now from Georgia. He owns an electronics store in Brooklyn all those years. Oh, my god! And I worked for him. Yeah. So all these uh, things that came out, I was there selling them at the time, so he's probably appreciating you this conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So on the way out, for folks that uh, want to use your service, because yeah. clearly... Again, uh, one a day in New York gets attacked, and as Richard just pointed out, in six months, that business is dead. This is no joke. This is serious stuff. How can people contact Protected Harbor today and make sure this their data is, is protected? Uh, visit us at protectedharbor.com, 833-CYBER-11. That's it? Yeah. Nice and simple. Protectedharbor.com, 833-CYBER-11. It's great to meet you, and uh, no pressure, but you do realize in a couple of years that you have to give my son Gabriel a job. So. Absolutely. That's the payback for this. Uh, if he's got passion, <laughs> we want him. He's really good, too. I mean, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, uh, you know who's our, our, our network engineer? Your son. My son. Is that true? Totally. Oh, that's cool. Good for you. He sat on my lap and, and started to learn how to log in oh, that's at great. six. And that's great. Yeah. How old is your son now? 24. God bless him. Well, God bless the whole Luna family, and thank, thank you, you for this exceptional work, and thank you for uh, being on my show. I appreciate and that. Thank you for this opportunity. You got it. Richard Luna right there is the CEO of Protected Harbor. Check him out once again, protectedharbor.com, and 833-CYBER-11. Protect your data today with my friend Richard and the fine folks at Protected Harbor.